So welcome to a slightly wintry day here in Ireland. A bit of snow is still on the ground over there, but we're going to test the Peugeot Peugeot 508. I'm just trying to cater for everybody here before there's a common start about Peugeot or Peugeot. It is undoubtedly the most beautiful car on the road at the moment. Really is very handsome in this SW version, but unfortunately, all who know me and all who subscribe here will be aware of how annoyed I get by touchscreens and small steering wheels. But let's check out, is it worth your while still buying a diesel Peugeot 508 today? Now, I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that this is an incredibly handsome car, both outside and in, both, right? The exterior on this is phenomenal looking. But we do have a problem on the inside, and well, where do I start? There's a lot of design in here, a lot. You've got this tiny steering wheel, which I think I'd probably get used to over time if I had it long enough, but the flat top and bottom, and just the shape of it, just doesn't lend itself well to just cruising. I find myself on motorways con continuously kind of adjusting my position with, because the steering wheel is so small and just annoying. And this bar across the top stops me seeing the entire instrument binnacle, which is now above the steering wheel. So we've had this for a while, but I'm still not used to it, Peugeot. I really am. I can't get over it. You'll note that sometimes I'll say Peugeot and sometimes I'll say Peugeot. The Irish ads, and in Ireland we say Peugeot. But so many of you complain when I say Peugeot, they all want Peugeot. Anyway, I'm not going to suit everybody. Um, when he started up... And I go through this infotainment system here as well because this this irks me more than anything to be honest with you. So you have some physical buttons across here. These silver buttons are physical ones. You can press them for music, for source, and for air conditioning and so on, right? But problem is if I want to change the temperature in the car, I have to press that, which brings up the temperature screen. That's one press. Then I have to press that, which changes the temperature on my side of the car. Then I press that to change the temperature on the other side of the car. Now, I can go into the full air conditioning system and change that so the two of them change at once. So if I press the air conditioning button and brought into a bigger screen with more options on it, I press options, then I press mono off. And then I go back to this screen where if I touch this side, both sides change. But look how many button presses that is. I just want a button that says sync. It's all you need. Sync. It's easy, right? I can I can somewhat deal with the touchscreen a little bit, okay? But 99% of the time it drives me up the wall. Sat nav. Press the sat nav button. I'm presenting with the built-in sat nav. I press search. I type port leash P O R T L A O I S E searching give it a minute right so it wants me to go to port leash and nace according to the top result or the port leash road in port arlington anyone know where either of those two things are or why it's not bringing me to the city center of port leash or the town center you know a center of port leash pois is the same sort of thing you can go to port leash station road port leash it's probably much more likely it was a train station or port leash motors weirdly enough i don't even know where that is but they're in there too um Overall, this doesn't work. I'm afraid it doesn't. It's fine. Look, for daily use, I get it. You can just press that and just go down a bit and then you're back into the radio. But just a knob, when it just goes... That was brilliant. It worked, okay? Now, other things is... So, if I pull up and I've stopped and I put my parking brake on, handbrake on, I got like that. Uh, did you hear the engine go off? No. No. There it goes. What was the difference? I don't get it. I don't understand why I have to press that button like that. So to start it, you press the button, and of course everything starts up, but I had my foot on the brake. So my foot on the brake, start. Start. There you go. I don't understand. And it manages to be so quiet that when I get out and do that, it might, I might leave it running. Look, I did it again. Look, it's still... Oh, there it goes. Shut down that time. It seems random as to whether it's going to turn on or off. So, to live with in here, 
I couldn't do it. I'm afraid I couldn't do it. As much as I enjoy the look of the car and I look at the interior, it's gorgeous. To actually live in this interior, I'd have a problem with that. Some storage bins are here and there, and there's some little bins here in the middle as well, with my gloves and, and sunglasses in it. And that's all good, that's all fine. So they've seriously improved the storage level of the 508, because the original one of this, or the previous one of this, was tiny in here. There's no room for anything. But this car is bigger and more technological. There is some drive modes and stuff in here. I'll get into them on the road. I do have a glove box. As usual, they've managed to put the fuse box inside the glove box. The glove box is, well, useless, if I'm honest. Um, you don't fit a whole lot in there. Now, all that aside, it's relatively comfortable. It's okay. You fit very low into the seat because the steering wheel is much further down the dashboard. The dashboard is much higher, so you feel like you're looking through a leather box out the front, which is kind of weird. Anyway, on with the back seat. So back, back door, now all the doors are lacking um, any frames on them. So they're all frameless doors. <clears throat> I'll show you a problem with that in a minute as well. Okay, so the back seat has tons of room. No problem with that. You do get a armrest in the center with two cup holders, very shallow cup holders in that. And there is uh, a loader, uh, the ski loader through there, which is pretty good. It's very comfortable back here. I would have no problem taking this car for a very, very long drive and sitting in the back of it. Fortunately enough, I'm the driver. This has um, hangers up here and it also has coat hangers inside. Very unusual up here at the top corner. Very small detail, but comes in useful as well. Um, but very comfortable. Map holders on the back of both seats and the back of the seats are plastic, which is pretty good. Right, let's look at the important part. The boot. So, boot space. This is the SW version, of course. It's not an electric tailgate, so you lift it yourself. That's okay. Now, in the test car, there is this plastic mat or rubber mat that's on the bottom of it. I think it's kind of plastic, um, which is good, but when you're driving around, this happens all the time. So you have to tighten it. It's great to have this plastic thing for like boots or something really dirty and heavy, but realistically, it just makes everything else slide from place to place. Uh, shopping bag hooks on both sides. I can drop the seats in there from in here to the big click of a switch. Net on that side. And underneath this, you get a spare wheel. It's a temporary one, but it's black and round. And that's the most important part under the boot here that we have a spare wheel. There's always should be a spare wheel in every car wherever possible. Um, you do have this tunnel cover. It fits over the back of it here. That's also able to go up like that. It's a little retractor. Kind of overly complicated. BMW did that as well, overly complicated, but it's it's fine, it's there. Okay, so that's the boot. Let's go for a drive. So just before we go for a drive, the door is actually pillarless. So when the windows are down, there's no pillars there. Now on the back door, that doesn't quite work out because you drop the door and you're still left with this bit sticking out, which is cool and all. But how to take your face clean off when you're trying to get into the cars, this bit just sticks out on its own here, okay? So when the windows are down, it is a little bit weird without the pillars on them, but it's very, I mean, what other car does it, right? As a French car, what other car gets on with it? Anyway, let's get on with the drive. So whenever I drive a Peugeot, I'm always reminded about how well a car can drive. These drive very well. You know, the, the suspension, the steering, it all fits together nicely. You know, there's so much in it that it's just lovely when you're trundling along these little back roads up mountains. What muddies the water really is this little steering wheel. I feel like I'm in a, I don't know, a single seat race car or a go car or something because you don't quite get all the angles on it. You know, it's just, the feedback isn't proper. And if it was just a big steering wheel, seriously, that, that argument just goes away when it's a normal steering wheel, because the car actually handles okay. Suspension is very good on the front and the rear. When you turn in on any corner, it remains nice and stable. You don't roll about the car very much. Although the things in the boot do roll around a lot, because of the mass thing, it just makes things slide about. Touch screen, you know my thoughts on touch screens, I don't like them. But I also don't like that I have to press more buttons than I need to press here 
to make something happen and I know I have the temperature set now to 21 and a half degrees it's on auto so I don't really have to change it very much but I'm already getting warm I have my jacket on I have to go in and turn it down oh no it's decided to connect the telephone in the middle of that now while I was turning it down there I want 20 degrees you see how many times I have to look at the screen to, to see what I'm pressing but whenever I go out in a Peugeot I'm always reminded about the niceness of these cars they, they drive so well they're just nice places to be I don't know they were pulling over to let me go by but I was actually going left there I'm also reminded about how beautiful the Sleep Blue Mountains are when I'm driving through them and today I actually went out for a drive in this car just to kind of solidify it in my head now I know a female has had this car before me because it smells like a handbag in here it's a uh, it does somebody wears an awful lot of perfume and drives this car around quite a lot so it's impermeated into the seats and into the into the seat belt as well Peugeot generally in the PSA group do a, just dramatic changes they make something and you go wow that is outstandingly pretty and that's what's after happened to this car the exterior in this car is second to none it really stands out in the crowd those those fangs on the front and the kind of um lion cuts in the tail lights and the kind of stuff that goes on it's just it's just so cool exterior design is spot on interior design is also good and will suit certain people and it is certainly different from the germans uh, and what they do with the interior of their car but realistically there's just so much fussy stuff going on there's so much debatable problems um, the touchscreen being one the instrument binnacle being up there being two the small steering wheel is three and these are things that you're touching all the time these are things that you're you're attached to they're part of the car they're the most interactive things in the car and so it's if you don't like them you really won't like the whole car the family bus who's buying a tree box saloon these days you know or indeed these estates there's great value in them for sure this one starts a shade over 31 grand and finishes off somewhere around 38 grand so it's still a lot cheaper than an electric car and it's a lot cheaper more affordable than some of the suvs out there that are of equivalent size you do sit low in this car a lot of people do want to sit high up on the car and not to be sitting in this sort of floor level this one has a diesel unit out front which is barely audible when you're on the cruise like right now but when you floor it or when you nail it the lack of power and torque is quite clearly there for fuel economy um, it's shunted through a seven speed uh, automa automatic gearbox now there are times when that gearbox feels like an old robotized one uh, just with quicker smarter changes in it so I have a feeling it's some sort of a blend of those those uh, kind of gearboxes out there. It's it's fine. It, it, you don't notice the gear changes for sure, but just sometimes you catch it out in the middle of changing gears and it doesn't know what to do when you're driving along. Fuel economy, second to none. I'm getting under 5 litres per 100 kilometres most of the time. Uh, and of course we know that diesel is the long range fuel you know if you want to go a long way don't even glance at electric because it will frustrate the hell out of you diesel is still where it's at it's going nowhere i promise we're not going to be getting rid of diesel by 2030 we're not going to be getting rid of any of that sort of stuff you'd be mad to it is a fine car i would really love it if they just it just stop over designing things just stop putting so much effort into touch screens into mirror link into all of these things that just don't make any sense you're the third biggest car maker on earth and it's lovely to have debates but listen to people when they say the little steering wheel you get used to it over time the instrument pinnacle being up there is okay the touch screen doesn't really work if you listen to people talking like that then you understand that it's time to change it's time to get it back to a more traditional feel car and give that design back i would be happy looking out the window at this car forever it is an incredible design without shadow of a doubt it's going to be a future classic of design uh, looks wise unfortunately the bugbear is always going to be the issues that i have with the car price wise works out kind of well 
you know it fits right in there and among those other cars i i would sooner i think i'd probably pick a passat estate i have to say it's i know it's very predictable of me to say well you know, of course you're going to pick a german car but a passat just does everything tick 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 everything perfect big boot big everything you know normal steering wheels the touchscreen has physical knobs there as well they've just ticked all those boxes so it's it's a lot easier to say passat is the one um Monteo would be in there too looks wise this kills the two of them this looks much better than both those cars but really which one would i have i'm afraid volkswagen's got it there it's been lovely having you along for the ride i'd very much like to have you along for more this is a, a subscription only channel please subscribe while you're here please don't need to subscribe subscribe uh, if you're not a subscriber, obviously. If you are a subscriber, then thank you very much for continuing to subscribe. You can uh, check out the links down below. If you want to support the channel in some way, you can do that. Uh, all I really want people to do is actually subscribe, because then I can stop begging down the bottom, as usual. So thank you very much for watching. And until the next time, I will see you on the far side.